talking about graphs and functions and so a lot of this should be review for you um, the first thing we want to look at is the Cartesian plane which is just really the intersection of two real number lines but it allows us to uniquely describe every point in this plane or basically you could think of it as a sheet of paper so um, you know that we describe these points using an ordered pair XY it's an ordered pair because the order in which the numbers are given to you um, does matter X always comes first and then the Y coordinate is always second um, the X coordinate of course describes how far we're going to go left or right from the origin and the Y coordinate describes how far we go vertically from the origin <coughs> and so we can plot points in our Cartesian plane using the X and the Y coordinates so I think the first thing we're going to do is plot a few points and we want to plot the point A with coordinates 2, 6 okay so that means from the origin I'm going to go two units to the right and then up six units all right we'll call that point A okay for B if we do six two we're going to go six units right and then up two units I need to go over one okay um, for C, it's negative 4, 2. So the negative 4 in the X position means I'm going to move 4 units to the left, but still up 2 from there. Okay, D, negative 3, 0. That means we're going negative 3 units to the left, and we're not going to go up or down. Okay, we end up in, on the X axis. E is 0, negative 3. So not going left or right, straight down. And then F, 4, negative 4, I'm going to go 4 units to the right and 4 units down. Okay, which everybody's probably comfortable with that, but any questions? Okay, very good. Okay, note that points on the x-axis always have what? We had one point on the x-axis, but for any point on the x-axis, what would it have in common? Okay, a zero y value. Always has, will always have a um, y value of zero. Very good. Okay, and points that are on the y-axis then are always going to have a what? x value of zero. Okay. All right, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> All right, the next thing that we're going to look at is the distance formula. I didn't mention to you um, one little extra credit assignment that I usually do for the semester. It has to do with Animoto. Anybody familiar with that website? Okay, Animoto um, takes pictures and turns it into a really sleek movie. Okay, without much effort on your part. What you have to do is provide it with the pictures, not pictures of yourself. Um, these will be digital flashcards, and however you decide to make those flashcards is up to you. You could put it on a regular index card, use your cell phone to take a picture, get it to the internet. Okay, that does it for you. So what I would encourage you to do, because I'm not really, I love the videos, they're cute, um, but I'm more interested in you starting to build some study skills and think about the things that are important as we go through the course I encourage you to do this along and along don't wait until uh, the end of the course and try to do it all and write down some of these things that are really important because I'm not likely to provide a lot of the formulas so you can start doing that now I'll give you an access code to Animoto a little bit later um, that gives you a premium account for six months or whatever but um, think about that the deal is 60 flashcards, 30 test points. All right? So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so here's our distance formula. If we want to calculate 
the distance between two points. We have point P with coordinates x1, y1, and Q with coordinates x2, y2. Um, the distance between P and Q, which is denoted by D of PQ, or distance between P and Q, is given by the distance formula, which equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. We subtract the x coordinates and square the difference. We add that to the difference of the y coordinates squared. Okay? That's our distance formula. While we're here, we'll also mention the midpoint formula, which allows us to find the point halfway between two points. In this formula, we add the coordinates and divide by 2. Okay, make a mental note of both of those things uh, so that you'll have that for the test. So, for example, if I want to find the distance between P and Q, coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment, okay, first I'm going to find distance. Okay, again, we're going to do the difference between uh, the corresponding coordinates and square that doesn't really matter which order we do it in, uh, but I'll say negative 7 minus negative 4 squared plus negative 9 minus 1 squared. Okay, so negative 7 minus negative 4 is negative 3, but I'm squaring that. And then negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10. Squaring that, looks like we get the square root of 109. Okay. Questions about that? Okay. If I want to find the midpoint, and I don't think we mentioned a notation for midpoint, did we? I don't think so. We'll just say midpoint. equals, this time we add and divide by 2, so negative 4 plus negative 7 divided by 2, and then 1 plus negative 9 divided by 2. Okay, that gives me negative 11 halves and negative 8 halves which is what? Negative 4. Okay, questions about that? Okay, excellent. 